let's uh, let's talk about some of the gear that you use. You referred to the drop shot. Uh, yeah. And I think that that's the one that, that probably carried you the, the, the furthest, at least in the championship round. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk through. Actually, you, can, you can go ahead and grab those if you want to. Yeah, the, um, but I actually caught a lot on the spinner bait and a lot on the swim bait. Okay. But that was something I did in the morning. It's like, um, especially the first morning, uh, it was kind of weird, but uh, I was always looking for fish schooling. Mm -hmm. You'd see them chasing out over deep water. And so these were the two I really fished like in the mornings. And I threw a small swim bait. Let's okay. get these two. I threw a little guy for a little while in practice, but it was so tiny, and a lot of the bait they were fit eating was like, it was like smelt and stuff. So yep. I used like a, a half ounce, to, this is a three eighths, but I used a three eighths, I had two of them. I used a three eighths and a half ounce with small, small willow leaves on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, like 16 pound line, a seven foot two uh, cranking rod, but heavy. Okay. And an eight five to one reel and, and a little trailer on it. And I had a trailer hook on it. Why those particular blades? The small blades because I could cast it further and and I wanted to burn it real fast. Okay. So that worked really well. I was catching you know, over 90, 100 feet of water on that. Really? So I'd just get in the area. I'd, I'd be fishing in an area. I'd see a couple come up over there and mm -hmm. I'd kind of work my way over there and then take this and fire it out there really far, get a really long cast. And this wind it kind of, I guess, medium fast, pretty fast speed. And I just, I wouldn't, once in a while I'd give it a little twitch, a little, a little flutter of the rod, flutter of the bait a little bit. Mm -hmm. but. They were eating that really good. I actually caught quite a few fish on that every day. Right. And uh, so that, I, I think I actually caught half my fish on these two and probably the other half on the drop shot. And another one um, that I caught a lot of fish on that I kind of worked, out, worked on during the week was this, it's got a half ounce, uh, half ounce of it with a, with a six ounce hook in it. It's kind of funny in it. Okay. On a seven foot six flipping oh, stick. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of the guys I saw were throwing spinning rods with little swim baits. Yeah. But they were, they were crushing that day. <laughs> <laughs> Why, 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 that's, why that size? Why did you choose that size? It just, they're eating it so good. Yeah. And I could throw it like 150 feet. I could throw that thing so far. Yeah. And, and I had a, you know, a little bit bigger reel, a, a Corrado 150 DC, which has uh, got a bigger spool capacity on it, carry more lines. So mm -hmm. I could get, I could, with the 7.6 rod flipping stick, I could cast it as far as I wanted. Yep. And on this bay, I just let it sink to where I thought the fish were at. It would vary from like, you know, just when it hits the water, start rolling it with the rod mm -hmm. kind of high, keeping it up high. And then, there were other times when the fishing would kind of slow down. Even on the spinnerbait, the same thing. It would kind of like, they wouldn't be busting much. So I'd let it sink for like 15, 20 seconds, get it down, you know, 15, 20, 25 feet, and I'd start winding it. I'd slow it down a little bit. And it was just, they were throttling. It was like a, I mean, it was a real aggressive bite, and I didn't miss very many. Like, they were, they were eating it. So, and I changed colors a little bit. That was a color I threw a lot, but, I, you know, in the mornings, I'd throw a little bit brighter color, a little bit more mm -hmm. shad, bright white. And then as the sun came up and it got a little later in the day, I went to more kind of mellow, clear water color. At what point of the week did you decide on the kind of the, the, the bigger swim bait? Uh, it's something I threw in practice too. Really? Um, yeah. yeah, I threw it. I threw it and I got bit on it. But they really, uh, you know, at that time I'm looking for fish. So I'm not mm -hmm. trying to catch them. That's right. Yeah. So I knew they'd eat it. And I threw the small swim bait, but it's so so slow and so hard. To, I could fish it so much faster and cover yeah. so much more water. And, and the way they ate, the bites I had in practice, it told me that, that I didn't need to throw a small one. So I. So I went big and heavy, six out hook, which is kind of funny. I don't think a lot of guys were doing that. And the spinnerbait was the same way. I, like I said, I had the only thing different in the spinnerbait is I had a trailer. I did put a trailer hook on it, so it was open water. And I, I was fishing a lot of times, I'd let it sink. I'd, I caught a lot of fish, like I said, 60, 90 feet with it, but a lot of those trees were probably, uh, you know, 15 to 25 feet from the surface. And the water is real clear, so I just kind of let it sink. And you can't really, that's a, that, this is a 3 8 but I did throw the half a little bit too on the deeper stuff. I had two of them. And uh, I'd just let it sink to a depth and then try to keep maintain that depth with it. So I'd reel it. I would, couldn't reel it fast at those depths, but I right, would. I'd right. reel it as fast as I could and kind of maintain that 15 to 20 foot depth. And they they were eating that thing really really good. And yeah. there was times when they'd be busting, I'd throw it and just wind it fast and it'd right. just crush it too. But so, you said this was this was mainly a morning thing. You said? Yeah, mainly morning. I caught some in the afternoon on it. Mm -hmm. Really, the swim bait was actually a little more productive. And uh, okay. once the sun got up and it got like later, but I'd, usually after about a, I think. Probably 10 or 11 o'clock, I kind of put these two down and started drop shotting a lot more because it was more effective. Yep. Okay, let's move to the, uh, to the drop to shot. To the drop shot. Yeah, I, I threw, um, I did throw a drop shot in the morning a little bit. And, uh, you know, typically it's it's real standard for me. In the mornings, I throw a lot of Aaron's Magic, which is like a mm -hmm. green, brown, and blue. Yep. It stands out better in the low light. Uh, so I did catch some fish doing that. I also, I also threw a, a, a natural shad clear, which it had a little bit. But this was those two, the Aaron's Magic and this one were the two hot ones. Mm -hmm. And this is just uh, Morning Dawn, which has been a color they've had around forever, Roboworm. And uh, 
This is Sculpin. I was actually using a pretty heavy line. Um, I was actually using like eight pound. Okay. And I had it on three sixteenths most of the time, but the last day I went to a quarter ounce, of course, because it was so windy. Mm. Uh, but I didn't go real heavy on the weight just because uh, the fish tend to drop it a little bit faster. So I wanted to eat it. I mean, uh, typically, and I use a long leader, probably 15 to 20 inches most of the time. And that's just a little Picasso way you can tie on. And that's a, a size one Gamagasu heavy cover finesse, which is uh, a phenomenal hook. It's, mm. it's like a signature hook, but it's a uh, it's a real thin wire hook, but it's yeah. extremely yeah. strong. Uh, and, and I was catching them out of the treetops and dropping it next to the trees. Mm -hmm. And I tried a nose hook, but the nose hook just didn't have enough meat to it. Yep. And so most of the time, uh, the one I wanted, I was just Texas rig. And, so and you were you were fishing on fish that you were looking at specifically. Most of the ones I saw, yeah. I caught. I saw them, or most of the ones I caught, I saw them on the grass okay. first. Yep. So I did a lot of just moving around, and I and I come on flats too where there's no trees. I just kind of I had a lot of spots like that where it was just a hard bottom, and uh, but it goes good. Now. That's a size one, and, yeah, but it yep. it does really well on that worm. And this worm's cool because it's got a ridge, a sharp ridge on the back, yeah. and it's got like a spade tail. And so when you move that worm, it darts forward. So when you hop it or, or shake it, it gives a kind of a natural action. So the worm itself is yep. really really good too. We uh, we stayed around that area for uh, for a couple of weeks. How hard was it to find that color in anywhere within a hundred? Nah, uh, I had hundreds of them. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> I had about 15 packs of them left. Yeah. And if I ever unload it, they'll pour me up some real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. But usually Robo is really good at that. They're usually, yeah. they kind of know when events come up mm -hmm. that they're they're going to need certain colors or certain yep. baits. But the Sculpin's kind of a sleeper. It's something I've thrown for probably over 20 years, that bait. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty uh, tight drag. And I, I tried to get him, he had to huff them out of there. Like when you stuck them, you couldn't yep. let them churn at yeah, all. Cause them. a lot of the yep. fish were pretty nice, right? Yep. Two pounders. Yep. And a two pound spot can be a, a, mm -hmm. a brute. And you, if you look, give him some line, even yep. if I went down to seven or six, so it was, six pound is a little sketchy. Yeah, and that was the difference maker for you, that championship. Yeah, I had Montgomery I, caught the same number of fish that you did, but mm -hmm. yours were slightly the, different. The, typically the ones by a dam are a little heavier, a mm -hmm. little bigger fish. Gotcha. Uh, they're a little harder to catch sometimes, but they're, there are usually, and over the years I fished that lake, the, the fish are a little heavier mm -hmm. overall, average. I know that you uh, you protest that you're not just the drop shot fisherman. I, mean, I know you, yeah, people I, tagged you with I, that. I, I always say I don't like the, like the drop shot. Well, you, I mean, liked I, it, you liked it well enough this time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I enjoy it, but I enjoy moving baits a lot more. <laughs> I'm like, the most anglers I think are like that. Yeah, I guess so. Bottom line is you probably enjoy winning more than anything else. Yeah, what so whatever it takes. Because well, when I don't drop shot enough is usually I don't win. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, were one of eight guys who uh, won a championship trophy this year. It was a, it was a great event, like I said, from, from start to finish. Seems like you have things dialed in real well, but uh, bottom line is it was, it was a lot of fun to see you out there lifting that trophy. It was, uh, it was, it was much needed. I mean, because I, 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 I mean, my year was kind of funky. I, I thought I had some up and downs. And I had some bad decisions I made at a couple of events. And, <laughs> And I was doing our, I mean, I, th I was doing good, but it was like, uh, I guess fishing the first year you want to win one. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. you want to be one of the first ones. And some of the guys were talking about that. I didn't think of that until they said something like, it would be cool to be one of the first guys to win one. So that was an honor and I was excited. It was, uh, it's definitely a trophy I'll hold dearly. It's one of the things that has been fun for us as we look back and we see these, uh, these new broadcasts on Discovery Channel. It's given us a chance to, to go back in time and to witness what all of you winners did, but your week, Table Rock, was awesome then. It's awesome now. Congratulations yeah. again, buddy. Thanks, John.